catalyst provides an alternative reaction pathway. We'll talk about reaction pathways in a second. So a catalyst provides an alternative reaction pathway of lower activation energy. And so you find that if you put in a catalyst, you have Ea cat. So you have the, cat the activation energy for when in the presence of a catalyst is always lower than the activation energy in the, uh, without one. And that just means that a greater proportion of your particles are able to react. Okay. So you need to be able to explain that as well. Now, if we have an exothermic reaction, let's put our uh, enthalpy up the side here. If we look at an exothermic reaction, so delta H here is negative. This is our activation energy, Ea, with a catalyst present. But actually, it may be that the activation energy is much higher when and catalyst is not present. So you have the normal activation energy of the reaction, and then you have the activation energy in the presence of the catalyst. Okay, we're well, happy with that. Mm -hmm. It's quite easy, isn't it? Is it? Yeah. 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 Good. Right, okay, now this is where we put the more complicated. If you're doing sandal level, you can go. Australia. Oh, is that actually a... Yeah. Uh, wow. Now, what we find, by the way, for high level, this is still, as long as you understand this, this isn't actually that complicated. So first of all, I'm going to talk about the rate to step. Okay, the most important thing to remember about kinetics is that um, not all substances in a chemical reaction necessarily affect the rate of reaction. So it may be that you may have a reaction like this, you may have a reaction in which you react uh, some A and two moles of B, and that produces two moles of C. Now, that may be your chemical reaction. But you may find that when you vary the concentration of A, it has no effect on the rate of reaction. Okay. And this is something which, at first, actually, can be rather startling when you're used to the fact that, hang on a minute, it's part of the chemical reaction. So here is my substance A, it's part of the chemical reaction, and yet when I change the concentration of A, nothing happens. How can that be? Well, the answer is because uh, of this, the rate-determining step. Okay, now what is the rate-determining step? Slow step. it has the highest activation energy. Okay, so it's a step that has the slowest step or has the highest activation energy. Now, sometimes I, because most step, most reactions proceed via more than one step. In fact, the vast majority of reactions proceed via more than one step. Okay. So you might have your uh, reaction going via uh, one step with a certain activation energy, and then going via another step with a certain activation energy, and then going right the way to products. Okay, so you might have something like that. So that's a three-step reaction. Which would be the rate determining step? Well, the rate determining the rate determining step would be the one with the highest activation energy. Now I can't tell from this. I'd have to get a ruler and measure which of these has got the highest activation. It's certainly not that one because that's got a tiny activation energy. But these two have <coughs> comparable. I think it's probably that one, which will be the rate determining step. How can you understand that? Well, the way I always think of it is an hourglass. So what is it that determines how fast the sand passes through an hourglass? The size of the gap. The size of this gap. Now, if I make a very strange hourglass, what is it that determines the speed at which this sand goes through the hourglass? Smallest, smallest gap. The third gap, yes, it's the third gap. It doesn't matter how quickly the sand goes through this one, it doesn't matter how quickly the sand goes through this one, but it does matter how quickly it goes through that one. That is the rate determining step. And that's the case for any, that's the same principle as a, as a chemical reaction. Okay, it doesn't really matter how fast your faster steps are, it only matters how slow your slowest step is. And so only species which appear or which affect, I should say, the rate-determining step, <coughs> only species which affect the rate-determining step 
will, have, will have any effect on the rate of reaction. And that's quite important, so you need to write that down. Only chemical species which affect the rate-determining step can influence the overall rate of reaction. So, only species which influence the rate-determining step can affect the overall rate of reaction. So, if the um, Perinaro um, gap had been the first gap, yeah. then the following ones would still affect how quickly it got to the bottom. No, the no, they no, they, were, they wouldn't, because if you think about it, if the very top one is a small one, it's the very narrow one, let's suppose it's so narrow that two grains get through at a time, they're going to fall straight through the other two holes. There's going to be no effect. So, um, now, let's supposing for a second that we find... Now, what we do, of course, in order to help uh, us to understand this, is we write uh, a rate equation for every reaction that we find. And a rate equation, we say that the rate is equal to the rate constant. And strictly, what we should do is we should put everything in the uh, equation here. All of the reactants should go into our rate equation. Don't you write this down for a second, because... Or you can write this down, actually, if you want. Because we may find that... Because then we have to do an experiment. It's very warm in here. Can someone just open the windows? Uh, or at least open one window. Actually, the blind should be enough if we get a through draft. Because that window is open already. So just wind up the blind. Great, that's now perfect. Okay, so, so what we do is we say, okay, here's our rate equation. But what we haven't done is we haven't put in our values for the power or the order of reaction with respect to those species. Okay. Now, how do we find out what the order of reaction is? Taking rate experiments. Yeah. Now, I cannot str stress this strongly enough. We must do an experiment. We need to write that down very clearly because people may often make mistakes. The number of times I've marked a papers and I've seen, here is, the, here is this particular equation. And what do people do? Well, they, they say, oh, look, we've got one of A, so that's just to the power one. Yeah. We've got two of B, and so that's to the power two. Yeah. And I see that all the time. And it's not correct. And it's because people are they, they're thinking a bit like an equilibrium. Because in an equilibrium, that is, of course, what you do. When you're writing an equilibrium expression, you do that. Because we'll come on to that next week or whenever we deal, deal with it. But when you're doing a rate equation, you must do an experiment. And when you do an experiment, what you do is you keep the concentration of A the same, and you vary the concentration of B, and you see how B affects the uh, rate of reaction. And then you keep the concentration of B the same, and you vary A, and you see how A affects the rate of reaction. <coughs> okay. Now, if that is when, that's how you determine the rate equation, and then you have to put the order of reactions in. And let's suppose in, uh, that we find that it's order 0 with respect to A and order 2 with respect to B. So we might rewrite this rate equation in that case, because we don't usually include it if it's order 0. We would write it as that. Now, please note, we're going to put a definition for this, because what, what do I call that? Order, order, order of reaction with respect to B. With respect to B. Okay, now what is the order of reaction? What's the definition for that? Well, it's fairly, it's fairly simple, actually. The order of reaction is defined as what it is in that rate equation. So I'll, I'll dictate it for you. The order of reaction is the power to which the concentration term is raised in the rate equation. So the order of reaction for a particular substance is the power to which the concentration term is raised in the rate equation. 